Hi, I'm Paul Hampton, Product Marketing Director at Alfresco. Alfresco develop and market the leading open source enterprise content management application. This video is designed to show how easy it is for anybody to download and install the Alfresco system on a Windows PC. Here we can see the Alfresco homepage, alfresco.com. Here you can find lots of information about Alfresco, the products that we offer, and the Alfresco community. On the right hand side you'll see a link to the downloads page. There are two versions available, Alfresco Labs Edition and Alfresco Enterprise Edition. The Alfresco Labs Edition is a free to download, free to use version and that's the version that I'll be installing later on today. Let's now go to the Download Labs version. Here I have a number of options. The latest version of Alfresco is 3.1. I have a link to the final version of that. We also make available two other versions. As an open source, open company, we want to give customers and our community an insight into where we're going in the future. And again, you can download in development versions of the product. The nightly build is what it says. As engineers are, are coding as they finish each day, so we go through a nightly automated nightly build. And that has very little QA. The preview version is a time box version where the engineers have said this makes sense, this is uh, some new functionality that we've added, we want to make it available, we want to give people previews to that and people can download that and run with that. But as I said we're going to get the 3.1 final version. Again I have the same options, I can download a Mac, a Linux, but I'm going to install it on a PC so I'm going to go for the, the full setup for Windows. Here's a form and this is really to allow us to understand what our customers, what our community are installing our Fresco on. So if you want to complete that, it will help us in our future plans. I'm going to skip that step and go straight to download. Firefox is now asking me to save it. I'm going to save that to my local file system and then we'll run the installer. Okay, so here's the uh, downloaded installation files. It's an executable so let's just start that off. Yes I want to run it. Ask me which language. Um, we can select from a, a range of languages but I'm just going to go for English and it tells me I'm going to install Labs version. That's fine. Let's go next. Two options here. I can to choose a typical which will make all the choices for me. Um, let's just run through the custom so you can see what some of the choices are. There's default components, uh, there's samples, so sample templates that you may want to in install and run. There's the web content management piece, so if you want to manage your website through Alfresco you can do that as well. Um, I haven't got Java JDK installed on my PC so I'm going to select this option and I also need OpenOffice, OpenOffice to do a lot of the transformation from one format to another. So let's select all of those. It's going to ask me where to install that, and as you can see, I haven't got an Alfresco directory, so I'm going to leave it at C colon Alfresco, um, and we'll just let that run. And off it's going, it's starting to run the install. And as you can see, it's created an Alfresco directory, and it's now creating everything inside there that it needs. It's finished installing Alfresco, so now it's installing the JDK. Remember, that was one of the options that we selected. Alfresco has finished installing the JDK, is now installing OpenOffice. Okay, so Alfresco has installed everything. Um, it's now asking us what database we want to run on. And again, we need a database to store a lot of the information about the, the, the documents and the content that you're managing. Um, you have two options here. I could install it on MySQL. Um, and typically, we must really want to do that as part of a production server. Uh, but for evaluation purposes, I'm just going to run it on the Derby database and that'll create all the files that we need. So just say next. Okay, so it's finished the install. It's installed everything we need to run. Um, it's asking me if I want to read the, view, the readme files. There's the readme files. Um, the next thing it's going to do is just take me to um, a website and give me a wiki which in includes more information about the, the version I've just downloaded and again I can read that to find out what I've done. So that's the product now installed. Next thing we want to do is start the server. So we've installed Alfresco. I want to start the server. Here we have two batch files. 
alfresco underscore start dot bat and alfresco underscore stop dot bat. And surprisingly, this one starts it and this one stops it. So let's just double click on the start. And here you can see we've got a little window that's telling us what's going on. And this is going to start the servers. The first time it goes through, it uh, unbundles and installs some of the files that we need to run. So you'll see that it's coming to uh, deploying a web application from a war file. So again, it's doing the Alfresco one and it'll go through and it'll do a couple of those depending on the different uh, options that we've selected. Here we can see it's deploying another application archive. In this case, it's for share. Remember we talked about the share being the collaborative interface. Okay, the server's gone through, it's deployed a lot of the applications, and when you see server start up in a number milliseconds, that means the server's ready to run. We can now test it by logging in and having a look around the Alfresco Enterprise Content Management System. Okay, so I've started my browser, in this case I'm using Firefox, and I've gone to a URL, localhost colon 8080 Alfresco and it gives me a login page. The uh, default user that's created is admin, so let's go in admin password is also admin, so let's type that in and we can log in. No, I don't remember that password. So here's the Alfresco Explorer interface. Um, it gives me a dashboard with a getting started, some, some take a tour, online help, some things that I may want to do. It also allows me to browse the repository uh, and here you can see that it's also automatically created a, a number of sites. I want to create a new area uh, I'm in marketing so let's create a space an area that the marketing people can upload their files. Let's call it marketing marketing space. So let's create that and here we can see now I've got a new space, a new area where marketing people can upload their files. Uh, I can come in here, I can now create other spaces, so possibly I want to create areas here for uh, PR, for events, whatever it happens to be. I can also add content. So I can click on a link and then say I want to browse my local hard drive and upload files and then have those files start to be managed by Alfresco. Okay, so I've opened my browser, and this time I've gone to a slightly different URL, again localhost, colon 8080, but this time forward slash share. I'm going to log in, same user, admin, admin, no I don't want to remember that password. And here we have the share interface. Again, this is our collaborative environment, allowing teams to work together on specific projects. It gives you a dashboard, a default dashboard, and again, if I wanted to, I could come up and customize that. First thing I want to do, really, is create a site. So let's say we've got a user meeting coming up, so let's call it user meeting. So here we go, we've called it a user meeting, and we said it's a site for the user meeting. So let's just make that, uh, create that. And here I am now in my, my new site for the user meeting. As you can see, it gives me a number of things I can do. There's a wiki, so if I've got various team members, I can allow them to work on a wiki and share information via the wiki. There's blogs, so we can write blog entries. There's a document library, so I can upload and manage content associated with this project. There's a calendar, possibly I want to schedule meetings with different team members, and we can use the calendar for doing that. I may want to make external links available, so I can put links in to other websites that may be in interest to the, the, the community working on the user meetings, discussion forums, and also I can see which other members. We're coming towards the end of the video. We've shown you where to go to download Alfresco. We've shown you how to install it on your local system, and then how to start the Alfresco servers. Finally, we've shown you how to log in through two different interfaces. 
Thank you for watching.